All right, let's look at some descriptive statistics uh, review questions to prepare you for your quiz. Uh, number one, the grades obtained by a group of 20 IB students are listed below, and we can see those 20 different IB scores ranging from uh, 1 to 7. Uh, part A, complete the following table for the grades obtained by the students. So I can see that there was only uh, one student who achieved a grade of 1, so there the uh, frequency is 1. How many students received a score of 2? Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, I count 4 kids who got a, f a 2. Uh, I already told us that there's 2 kids who got a 3, yeah, that seems to be backed up by what I can observe. How many kids got a 4? Well, none in the top row. In the bottom row, 1, 2, 3 kids. And then uh, the 5 is done for us, the 7 is done for us, we just got to put in the number of 6's. I can count 3 in the top row, and uh, 2 in the bottom row, that's 5. And a good way of just making sure that I've uh, done this correctly is by adding together these numbers in my frequency column, and making sure that I get a total of 20. So let's see, 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 2 is 7, plus 3 is 10, plus 4 is 14, plus 5 is 19, plus 1 is 20. Great. So I must have done part A correctly, since it did add up to all of my uh, 20 students. Uh, part B. Write down the modal grade obtained by the students. That's the one that occurs the most frequently because of the word mode. And so we can see that the one that occurred the most frequently is, uh, uh, with f recurring five times, is a score of six. Um, part C. Calculate the median grade obtained by the students. Well, there's a couple of ways we could do this. One way we could do this is manually. We realize that there's 20 students. If you cut 20 students into half, you'll have a lower 10 and you'll have a higher 10. Okay, bottom half, top half. We know that the median occurs in the middle, so it's going to be the 10th biggest, that is to say the highest of the bottom 10, uh, tied with the lowest of the top 10. And so we are looking for the 10th and the 11th values, and then we will take their midpoint. So let's see, we, this is one value so far, plus four, that's five values so far, plus two, that's seven values so far, plus three, that's 10 values so far. So our 10th value must be inside this category, and so the grade is four. And then the 11th kid must be the very first one in the next category of five. And four plus five divided by two gives me 4.5. So I believe my median is 4.5. Now let's use the calculator to verify this. In stats, I'll edit list one to be all of my different grades. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then list two will be all of the corresponding frequencies. One, four, two, three, two, five, and one. And, uh, oops, I made a mistake. It's four, five, and one, isn't it? Sorry. So there, four kids who got a five. And now I can quit, and I'll say stat, and I'll say calculate, and I'll do one var stats. But before I just hit enter, I have to remember that I'm now dealing with not only my x values of my grades, but also their corresponding frequencies in list 2. So one of our stats is going to be second one for list 1. Those are all my x values. So the first thing that you put into one of our stats are your x values. And then comma, and the second thing we put into one of our stats are all of your corresponding frequencies, which I happened to enter into list 2. And if we look for the median, down by scrolling, we'll see that the median is indeed 4.5, just as we had done manually, 4.5. All right, let's move on to question number two. There is a survey conducted of 208 different houses. How many bedrooms occur in each one? And we can see a table of results. First, let's state whether the data is discrete or continuous. Well, our data is the number of bedrooms, and the number of houses is the frequency with which each of these data values occurs. So looking at our data, the number of bedrooms, is it possible to have any real number of bedrooms? Like, could you have 1.7294 bedrooms? Of course not. Therefore, this is known as discrete data where we have gaps in between the possible data values. There's nothing that can occur 
between 1 and 2. Continuous data would have been something like a height, or an age, or a weight, or a time, where it is possible to always go in between any two values, if you have a device that can measure that precisely. Let's move on to part B. We need to write down the mean number of bedrooms per house. Now, one thing we learned from some of the practice exercises is that when the mean is worth two marks, they're probably expecting us to show some kind of work. So we know that one bedroom has occurred 41 times. So instead of doing 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 41 times, let's just do 1 times 41 to represent the 41 houses with one bedroom. And then we've got two bedrooms in 60 houses. We've got three bedrooms in 52 houses. We've got uh, four bedrooms in 32 houses, five bedrooms in 15 houses, and six bedrooms in eight houses. We want to take that total amount and divide it by the total number of houses, which is 208. Now I've written down my calculation. I could, I suppose, enter this into the calculator. Why don't we do that? So we've got, whoops, I need to uh, exit. All right, here we go. 1 times 41 plus 2 times 60. And by the way, this is actually not the way I would recommend doing it, but it works. And I'll do it in a quicker way on the calculator in a minute. 3 times 52, 4 times 32, 5 times 15, 6 times 8. And I'll take that sum and I'll divide it by 208. And that should give me the mean number of bedrooms per house, 2.73. But I'm going to confirm this result by using STAT. And I'm going to edit. And let's clear these old lists. So I'll go up until list 2 is highlighted, and I'll press clear. Not delete, or the entire list 2 as a column will disappear. There we go. I've still got list 2 as a column, but now it's blank. Same thing. List 1, clear, enter. And now I'm ready to put in my brand new data. So my bedrooms are one bedroom, two bedrooms, three, four, five, or six bedrooms in a house. And my corresponding frequencies are 41, 60, 52, uh, 32, 15, and 8. All right. Now then, let's quit and go into stat, calculate, one of our stats. And we need to tell the calculator that all of our data is in list 1, and then all of our frequencies are in list 2. And then we can press enter. And look, it confirms that our mean is 2.73, just like we did by hand. It also tells us that the standard deviation is 1.34. And it's going to be a lot quicker just to use the calculator's value. I mean, look, it's only worth one point. They're not expecting you to show the entire long process with the columns and the x minus x uh, bar uh, all squared, and then the frequencies times those squares. And, and you remember that big long table that we would do? That's only if they want the standard deviation, if they want you to show all the calculations, and then it would be worth around three points. In this case, it's only worth one point, so please use your calculator value. Part D, how many houses have a number of bedrooms greater than one standard deviation above the mean? So, we've got a mean and we're adding one standard deviation above it. So that's going to be 2.73 plus one of our standard deviations of 1.34. And that gives us, uh, let's see, do this on the calculator, I think, 2.73 plus 1.34 gives me 4.07. And so it tells us then that we're looking for houses with a number of bedrooms greater than this amount of 4.07. So what are the possible numbers of bedrooms greater than 4.07? Well, five bedrooms or six bedrooms. There's going to be then a total of 15 plus 8 houses which have got more than 4.07 bedrooms per house. That's going to be an answer of 23. All right, let's scroll down then to number three. Shows us that the distribution of weight 